Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Behar, and I have the pleasure of serving as FIU's Senior Vice President for Academic and Student Affairs, and I will be hosting today's town hall. It is a pleasure to have our second FIU student town hall with you. We're excited to reconnect with you, to be joining with you today, and hope that at the end of this time, you will find our time to have been of utmost value. I'd like to begin with a few housekeeping items. Today's discussion is being live streamed on the FIU Facebook page and is being recorded and will be available later on the news.fiu.edu as well as FIU social channels. We encourage you to send in your questions. Please make your questions as succinct and as clear as possible and post them in the Q&A function. Our teams of employees are working steadfastly behind the scenes to ensure that we try to address all of your questions. Also note that on a regular basis, you should be checking the FIU.edu coronavirus main page for updated FAQs. We have a lot of information we wanna share with you today. We want you to be as informed and as aware as possible as this situation continues to affect our South Florida community. One of the things I wanna emphasize is that this situation is dynamic. Just since our last town hall a few weeks ago, the situation in Florida continues to change. Therefore, our communication and our ability to connect with you is of utmost importance. I'm thrilled you're here. This means that you are indeed connected and engaged, and we want you and need you to stay connected and engaged with us. We anticipate moving forward, having to communicate with you on almost a daily basis. We are being thoughtful, we are being intentional as your well being and our community's well being is our top priority. I would like to begin by introducing our panelists today, a few of whom will be speaking and answering questions during our QA. Dr. Mark B. Rosenberg, University President, Dr. Mary Jo Trepka, Stemple College of Public Health and Social Work, Robert Grio, CIO, our Chief of Police. Alex Casas, Dr. Brenny Garcia, our AVP for Student Health and Wellness, Dr. Charlie Andrews, our AVP for Academic and Student Affairs, Dr. Aneda Roldan, our CEO of our FIU Healthcare Network, Andrew Naylor, our Senior Director for Housing and Residential Life, Sanyo Matthew, our AVP for Auxiliary and Operations, Jose Toscano, our Senior Director for Student Life and Development, Alexandra Valdez, our Student Government President and FIU Trustee, and Amy Aiken, our AVP for Operations and Safety. We have high expectations for today, and we're gonna get right into it. So it is now my pleasure to present to you our fifth president, Dr. Mark B. Rosenberg. Thank you, Dr. Behar. Thank you all for being here. I am here today to listen and to learn I appreciate the fact that, that so many of you are on for the same reason, but I am also looking forward to the really good questions that we've already seen coming forth for this town hall. Thank you, Dr. Behar. Thank you, thank you to your entire team. And uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to, the, to this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you as always for your leadership and your guidance. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to a local, state, and national expert, FIU's very own Dr. Mary Jo Trepka. Dr. Trepka is an epidemiologist within our own Stempo College of Public Health and Social Work. Dr. Trepka? Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to take a couple minutes to tell you what's going on in Miami-Dade County with respect to COVID-19. So I'd like to show you two figures of the cases that we've had with COVID-19. And first, want to acknowledge our very own Roy Williams, one of your fellow uh, FIU students who has put these figures together. So the first figure I'm showing you is the number of people who were, who were reported as positive uh, to COVID-19 by day from uh, late, late March until the present time period. And there's two arrows. The first arrow is the time when the mayor had the, the safer at home order, shut down the, 
everything essentially. And then the second uh, arrow is the time when the county reopened. And you can see after we reopened that there was a tremendous increase in the numbers of cases. Now this figure is a little bit deceptive because at the time of March and April, very few people got tested. So really the next figure is the one I really want you to look at. Okay, so this figure is of the same time period, but this is of the people who are tested, the, the percentage that test positive. And you could see at the time of the first era when we shut down that there was a decrease in the number of people who were testing positive. Then at the time of the second era when we reopened, the percentage of people testing positive increased. You also see one other thing too, and that is where we currently are right now is actually worse than we were back at the end of March. So at this time period in Miami-Dade County, we are having significant community-wide transmission of COVID-19, and in fact, our hospitals are being affected. So now I wanna talk about what we can all do about this. It's crucial that, that each one of us and each one of you do your best to try to reduce community-wide transmission of COVID-19. That means you need to be staying home if you have any symptoms or think that you might have been exposed to somebody who has COVID-19. That you wear a mask over your mouth and nose anytime you're outside of your home or outside of your car. That you do not meet in person with people outside of your household unless it's absolutely essential. And of course, washing hands and, and cleaning and disinfecting surfaces. There's other things you can do too. You could consider volunteering for a vaccine trial. You could consider a volunteering for many of the local nonprofits that are being very stretched right now with the COVID-19 crisis. But I want to ask all of you really to be leaders among your family members or among your friends to, to do your part and all of our parts to reduce uh, COVID-19 transmission. So now I wanna talk about the situation within FIU. So we have been working to help uh, keep the campus as safe as possible currently, while we do have some students working on campus um, and living on campus, and then in the future as we repopulate campus. And so the, there, there are multiple things that are going on to help uh, uh, protect people on campus. And you'll hear about some of these in detail later on, but basically they are in the categories of physical distancing guidelines, mandatory face coverings, reconfigured faces, spaces so that there's a, that there, we don't have the same density in lecture halls and classrooms, uh, our Panthers Protecting Panthers app, app that you will hear about shortly, COVID-19 testing, new cleaning and sanitation procedures, our COVID response team, and also monitoring what's going on with respect to COVID-19 in the community as well as on campus. And I wanna to speak to you a little bit about the COVID-19 response team. It's one of those measures that's being implemented. It's a group of public health professionals and a nurse who will be conducting contact tracing, providing education, links to resources. They'll be the go-to group for any questions that people have with respect to COVID-19. What will they be doing? They'll be interviewing people who've been diagnosed with COVID-19 to see if they've had any close contacts on campus. They'll be determining if any FIU buildings need to be decontaminated, and they'll be contacting those FIU contacts so that they can be tested and quarantined. And then finally, they'll be providing clearance for people to come back to campus. They will not be a substitute for the health department. The health department will be contacting cases about household contacts, contacts outside of FIU, but the response team is focused specifically on, F on the FIU environment. So thank you so much for participating today and please be safe. Thank you, Dr. Trepka. Um, it is important for all of us to take care of our community. And as Dr. Trepka introduced, we have launched the Panthers Protecting Panthers campaign. And a critical element of that is our P3 app um, and here to briefly highlight those features is our Chief Information Officer, Robert Grillo. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, and good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for participating today in our uh, student town hall. So I wanted to share with you the development of our FIU Panthers Protecting Panthers application that we have been designing and developing. So we introduced the app in our previous student town hall, but wanted to give you an update because maybe this might be the first time uh, that you actually see the app 
uh, and we will actually want it to introduce it to you. Uh, this is one of many ways that the university is addressing our Panthers Protecting Panthers strategy to repopulate the campus and we'll go through the functionality today. The app is intended to help uh, the app is intended to help educate our FIU community and provide necessary information for our campuses. We are providing this app in three different languages, English, Spanish, and Creole. The app is not intended to diagnose if you have COVID or not, nor diagnose any virus or disease. It follows CDC guidelines as it relates to the process for screening our students, faculty, and staff as they come to campus. The application will be available via the Apple iOS, Android, and can be accessed uh, via the internet uh, with a desktop or a laptop. This slide, can we go back to the previous slide, please? Yes, so this slide is basically the main menu of the application. Um, if you're coming to campus, we're, we will ask you to be compliant and fill out the information on a daily basis. In addition, we'll be asking the students that are actually housing in our residential halls to also fill this out on a daily basis. So this is the main menu of the actual app. And it basically highlights some of these components that I wanna share with you briefly. It has the ability on the top to screen individuals using the CDC-based symptoms and questions in order to make sure that we are managing our risk during campus repopulation. We also have our campus, can we go back to the slide please? We also have our campus workplace conduct guidelines that illustrates the most up-to-date information, such as wearing proper face coverings and ensuring that we maintain social distancing. We also are including information on the latest FIU coronavirus updates and provide links to the local resources that are covering COVID-19, such as Miami-Dade County and Broward County. And also on the right-hand side of the actual presentation, you'll see that it'll be a very important aspect that you will receive a pass or fail notification once you fill out the initial screening information. And you may have it readily available on your mobile device since it will be updated on a daily basis as this information uh, becomes relevant for that particular day. Next slide. Okay, so the screening process is very simple. Uh, and this is an example of the CDC-based questions that you need to fill out, again, on a daily basis before coming to campus and they are very simple yes or no answers. And if you need to highlight any particular symptoms, it is a simple checkbox that you would need to, uh, to click on. If you're not coming to campus, you're not required to complete the screening. And we do understand that this information is very fluid and we're working with our FIU health professionals and following CDC guidelines to make sure that this information is up to date very often and periodically. Next slide. So in addition to working with our, health, uh, our FIU health experts and following the CDC guidelines, we have an algorithm that helps users be informed on what are the next steps once they fill out the screening information. The results from the screening information will give you three responses. First would be green, means you're okay to come back to campus. Yellow, which means stay home and monitor symptoms. Or you'll get a response that will be red and it'll say a combination of symptoms that may be related to the virus. And the recommendations will be to stay home and get tested. And also in addition, as Dr. Trupka mentioned earlier, there could be potentially a follow-up if required from our FIU COVID response team that may follow up with you if any additional information is required for you to return to campus. The next slide. So we put together our most commonly asked questions, as you could see here, and through the presentation, I tried to make them as readily available as possible, but let me highlight a couple which I think are important before we actually conclude the presentation. The app will be made available to students before the first day of classes, and we're targeting August 18th for that. Um, if the app gives you an information on what you need to do, you will be provided which, which are the current steps that the algorithm will, uh, you know, will give you the information on what is needed. A popular question that comes up is, will my professor know uh, if I actually filled out the app um, and also if I actually need to stay home? So we are finalizing the, the process as it relates to that, but as a common practice, we're asking you as students 
to please be responsible and follow up with your instructor to coordinate any information that might have been missed during the class instruction, either via email or via Canvas. Um, something that we actually are trying to do is ensure that we all have the Panther protecting Panthers and we actually are working as this as part of the honor system to make sure that you actually fill the app on a daily basis. On who could actually see your data, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the COVID response team, which is the team that Dr. Trubka did mention, they will have the ability to do any follow-up that will be necessary. Um, and you are required to complete it on a daily basis, including our students from housing. And we're also developing the ability for you to have a reminder on a daily basis to make sure that you don't forget. So with that, uh, Elizabeth, that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Um, and, and it's important that we focus on that. The app is here to protect us and to allow us, right, to go back to as normal our daily routines as possible. We all want to get back into class. We all want to get back onto campus. Um, and so uh, we're going to now turn to Dr. Charlie Andrews to talk a little bit about classes and what they're going to look like. But I do uh, want to stop for a small little announcement. Um, that if on your screen uh, the poll is popping up, we have a poll of just a few questions. We're trying to understand, understand you and understand your needs a little bit better. Uh, we encourage you to take the poll. We've got about 80% participation right now, so we're shooting for 100. That's what FIU shoots for. Um, and, and as well, uh, if you have already asked a question, there is no need to ask it twice. Um, there are some questions that are so good and so popular that we're going to hold them and answer them live, and the other ones will be answered during the chat, so please be patient with us. And as well, uh, for our audience members on Facebook, um, please know that your questions will be answered as well. We have folks monitoring those as well. And with that, uh, Charlie. Good afternoon, Panthers. So some of you may have heard this already if you participated in a previous town hall or seen on social media. We developed a site, askcharlie.fiu.edu. So I'm the Charlie behind that. And this site is designed specifically to provide assistance if you're struggling with getting your fall courses finalized. So with the change in the way the courses are being offered, if you have questions or concerns about, about your fall schedule specifically, you can come to this site. There's information on this site about the way that the different ways that the courses will be offered. Um, there are some FAQs on here as well as in the resources tab, you can find a link to the main FAQ page that Dr. Behar mentioned earlier. So if you click on ask a question or on the on my adorable bitmoji to the to the right that you see to the right, it will take you to a screen that you can submit your question. So fill out your information and be specific here. I, I've had students who are like, I need help with getting a class. It doesn't help me figure out how to help you. So please, you know, be specific about what you need help with regarding your fall schedule. And I'll get back to you as, as soon as possible. Along those lines, I, I wanted to just share a couple of FAQs of things that I have been seeing a lot of over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the first question relates a lot to students who are either trying to search for different options. Uh, maybe they have a, an in-person course, but they prefer to have a remote course. Um, or they're just not sure how to tell whether a course is remote or in person or online. Um, so the, the, you'll see the answer there. There are a couple of tips, obviously under location. If it's, if it's remote, it will say remote. Under room, it would say no room needed. That's how you know that the course is being offered remotely. Um, so if you are wanting to change a course, the first thing you should do is log into MyFIU, go to manage your schedule and search for those classes and see what options are available. If you have an in-person class and you want to switch to remote and there's one available, just simply make the swap like you would do in any other semester and you should be all set. The second question is really for our international students who may be listening and watching today. Um, there's been a lot of questions I know from our international students, some of which related to the, the federal policy about needing in-person courses, which thankfully was rescinded last week. Um, but also if you are, um, have any questions about your immigration status or your documentation, your resource is the International Student and Scholar Services Office, often referred to as IFSS. Um, you can see their website here. There's a lot of great information that they're updating regularly, and it has their contact information right there. They have a website. They can do virtual meetings with you. You can make an appointment. So I want to encourage all of our international students, if you're watching, to make sure that you stay in contact with IFSS and check their website regularly. 
There's a question often that comes up about oh, my courses are remote. If, if things get better, which we all hope they will, will they suddenly be moved to in-person in October or somewhere in the middle of the semester? And the answer to that is no. All courses that are starting remotely or online will stay that way and remain that way throughout the entire fall semester. On the flip side, if you have in-person courses, our hope is that they would remain in-person or hybrid throughout the whole semester. But obviously, if the situation um, warrants us moving to remote, then those would, those would be able to be done very quickly. Um, and then the last question is actually just a segue for the rest of the presentation you're gonna see. There are a number of campus services. Students have been asking, like, I'm taking my classes remote. Can I come to campus? And yes, there are going to be our services offered. Um, some of them may still be remote, um, like advisors are still going to be connected to you remotely, um, but a lot of our services will be available on campus, and you're going to hear more about that as we move forward with the presentation. Thanks, Dr. Behar. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, we, we appreciate you, and we appreciate the ability to always have the opportunity to ask Charlie. Um, I want to uh, emphasize what, uh, what Charlie mentioned with respect to ISSS. Um, the team members are, are here as part of the town hall behind the scenes to address your questions. Um, and Dr. Pablo Ortiz over Global Affairs has uh, informed me that uh, he will be hosting another internationally, uh, internationally focused uh, student town hall um, in the coming weeks. Um, so uh, please continue to, to communicate with us and, and share your concerns. Uh, we know there are many questions uh, regarding housing and residential life. And so here with us today, we have uh, Andrew Naylor, our Senior Director for Housing and Residential Life. Andrew? Andrew, you might yeah. be on mute. I mean, I, I... Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Panthers. Housing and Residential Life staff have been working very hard to prepare the halls to welcome residents this fall. Um, we've done it in a way to promote um, healthy living and to encourage Panthers to take care of Panthers and protect Panthers. We start starting by having the hall move in, which is going to be a structured move in with appointment times. And we're doing this to eliminate crowds and to have a, a very smooth move in um, for our residents. Um, you can sign up for appointment times by visiting um, go.fiu.movingin um, and get more information about that. With that, we have some different expectations for living on fall this campus um, so that Panthers can protect Panthers. Those include that residents um, will be wearing face coverings at all times when they're outside of their room or suite. Um, physical distancing. We have guest limitations in place um, to um, limit the number of visitors coming into our buildings. Um, limits to large gatherings. So many of the common areas on campus um, and in our buildings are going to be closed off until it's deemed safe to open. Um, we have virtual programs and activities planned. And then our housing and residential life facility staff is doing an enhanced cleaning schedule that includes cleaning all the common areas and the elevator buttons and the door handles um, with electrostatic foggers several times a day. So there's been a lot of questions about um, our occupancy and room requests. And so one of the things I wanna share is that we have different housing at FIU than a lot of other universities in that all of our housing are suites or apartments and they house no more than four residents who share um, a common bathroom and common living room and common kitchen. Um, this creates a pod of students who becomes like a family. And we're hoping that those students in that family environment in their pod take care of themselves. And if there is an issue that's a threat to that family unit um, that they report it to staff so that we can make sure that's addressed. Um, students who may be assigned to a shared bedroom, um, if they'd like to move to a private bedroom, they should contact our office and we will work with them um, as long as we have space available to move them to a private bedroom. So there's a lot of questions about testing for students and housing and we are strongly encouraging students to test for COVID-19 and self-quarantine prior to arriving. Again, that's part of Panthers protecting Panthers. 
When you do come to campus, testing is going to be available at the um, fairgrounds right next to MMC. And you'll be able to make an appointment online if you want to get tested anytime throughout this semester in this pandemic. If a student is displaying symptoms and suspect they might have COVID or if they have tested positive, we want them to wait at home until they, they feel better and have tested negative before coming to campus. And we're going to work with students to have a delayed move in who are in that situation. So many students have raised concerns about their classes going remote and the, the increased cases in Miami. And for those students that don't feel that it's safe to live on campus for them at this time, we're working with them and we have a very generous cancellation policy right now. At MMC, there is no penalty to cancel. And for Bayview at BBC, there is a $250 cancellation fee that can be applied to a spring lease. So another question that's come up from students who have canceled with us is, would they be able to live in housing in the spring? And we anticipate that we're going to have enough housing for any student who canceled with us in the fall to live with us in the spring. Those agreements for MMC housing are going to open on October 1st, and Bayview is already accepting spring leases. We really hope that we're going to be able to welcome back a number of students in spring semester. Thank you, Andrew. Um, I also want to reiterate that the FIU Student Health Clinic is available uh, for students as well as a resource should you have any questions. And I want to just take a moment to say, you know, working uh, with all the, the universities or around the state and around the nation, um, I, I applaud FIU's flexibility uh, from a housing perspective. We want everybody to be comfortable um, with their with their decision with regards to, to housing and residential life. Um, so just please feel free to reach out and communicate to us and, and we will work through through that those issues with you. Um, we also, while we're excited to and, and hopeful and optimistic to get students back into the residence hall safely, we're also hopeful, optimistic and excited about student programming um, in the future, in the short term and in the long term. And so with that, I'd like to turn now to our Senior Director for Student Life and Development, Jose Toscano. Thank you, Dr. Behar, <clears throat> and welcome everybody. Um, so our programming for this fall, we are primarily gonna go virtual. Um, some of our major events that we're looking in the fall at the beginning will be virtual. Some of them that you may be familiar with, such as Week of Welcome, our Fraternity and Sorority Recruitment, and some parts of our homecoming will be virtual. However, we will be working with the university, and I'll talk a little bit more shortly, of some of our events that we will be holding on campus. Um, we wanna make sure as the fall semester arrives, for many of you, you may be part of a student organization or student club. So registration opens on August 1st. It's gonna be very important that you adhere to that deadline because as we work with both student unions at MMC and BBC, in order to reserve room for your meeting space or some um, short-term program that you may be thinking about, you need to be recognized by our office. So make sure you keep an eye out, make sure you log on to Panther Connect at fiu.edu to make sure you get those updates. But remember, August 1st will be the opening deadline for student organizations. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, the, we will be having some programs that are going to be on campus and we'll be working to assure your safety and working with the student unions to make sure those events are successful. Uh, my staff and I, we have considered some events such as an SGA open house so that you all can meet your student leaders at MMC and BBC. Uh, the Center for Leadership is looking at doing an Academy of Leaders. As part of homecoming, one of the, the great traditions we have on campus, we're looking at doing a Panthers Got Talent in person. Now, I'm not going to put too much emphasis on that because I want to make sure I don't ruin it for our homecoming council students, but they have a big surprise for you all. Um, for our fraternity and sorority life, our, our main speaker in October for our hazing prevention month will be in person and we'll have more communication on that. I think one of the most um, exciting things that we have seen in this remote environment 
as students and people just want to get connected is that um, as movie theaters are closed, drive-ins have actually been something that's been popular again. So we're going to bring the drive-in to you. Um, we're looking at locations at both MMC and BBC so that you guys can share that common experience. In addition, um, as I mentioned, once you are registered for those who are in student organizations and clubs, the Center for Leadership is offering programs on demand on where you can request leadership opportunities and development through them. <clears throat> um, now, when it comes down to meeting and um, hosting your programs on campus, um, it's gonna be important. And I don't wanna take too much thunder from our next presenter, but it is important that you register and be a recognized organization so that, that the student unions can then guide you on how to better program with these new pro uh, processes that are gonna be in place. Um, for those who are not engaged or not part of an organization, our Center for Student Engagement is holding consultations or one-on-ones virtually that you can contact them at CS, cse.fie.edu to get information, not just to get involved on the student life side, but also to see what's happening on the academic side. Um, last but not least, um, one of our proudest things, you know, we never leave a panther behind. Our food pantry um, will be open um, and has been open all summer long. Uh, for those who are new to the university, our food pantry at MMC is located in GC 319. Um, coming soon, we have a new location that, um, again, I'm not going to ruin the, the fun that's coming up, but there's going to be a, a, a soft launch of a new location at BBC in the Wolf Center. However, if you do have a need today or you have a student, a fellow Panther who does have a need today and they're at BBC, they can come to the info desk at the Wolf Center and pick up a care package there. So with that, I'd like to uh, welcome you all and looking forward to your fall engagement uh, at Florida International. Thank you, Dr. Behar. Thank you, Jose. That's very thoughtful and that's very intentional and we appreciate that. We're looking forward um, to the semester ahead. And um, thank you all uh, on Facebook and uh, on Zoom watching this for hanging in there with us. We know this is a lot of information and communication is critical. And what Jose mentioned earlier um, is so important because our infrastructure, infrastructure, logistics and operations behind the scenes have to be in tune with all of the various events and uh, programming that's going on in the student experience. And so we're trying to work on every detail to try to keep the university as a uh, safe as possible. And so with that, I'm going to ask our AVP, Sanyo Matthew, uh, for a brief introduction of how uh, the unions and the rec centers are going to uh, proceed with management and operations this coming semester. Sanyo. Thank you, Dr. Behar, and good afternoon, Panthers. Uh, it is my privilege to oversee the student centers <clears throat> and the wellness and recreation centers at MMC and BBC. I'm excited for this opportunity to be here with you today. Allow me to talk through some of the changes that you can anticipate. The first thing you'll notice is additional signage like floor decals for traffic flow and reminders of physical distancing throughout common areas like our food courts, lounges, study areas, game room, and so on. Our customer facing areas like the Welcome Center and most offices will have acrylic panels for spacing our lounges and food courts, the layouts are gonna be adjusted to meet safety guidelines. And most importantly, we've always prided ourselves in maintaining top-notch facilities. Now more than ever, we're multiplying those efforts. We're gonna have an increased emphasis on cleaning high-touch areas like doorknobs, elevator buttons, handrails, and so on. Every night, our team is gonna use CDC-approved equipment and chemicals to deeply sanitize the entire building. Next slide, please. So as Jose mentioned, we know you trust the student centers, both the Wolf and the Graham Center to host a majority of your events. We've been planning with a lot of intentionality and thoughtfulness, adjusting our layouts, adjusting our capacities to ensure physical distancing. Virtual events are still encouraged virtual or in person, I want you to know that we are ready to support you. Reach out to us, we're ready to help. Next slide, please. All right, got some exciting updates here. In addition to preparing for your safe return to campus, we've also been refreshing our dining options in collaboration with our Office of Business Services and Chartwells. You can look forward to some new offerings. 
Pinto Factory and Caribbean Crave being added to the Graham Center, and Chick-fil-A and Vicky Cafe being introduced at BBC. Apart from that, a lot of our locations are being refreshed as well. So very exciting time for you to come back to campus. Next slide, please. Now on to the wellness and recreation centers, our gyms. Here, you can also expect increased signage, cleaning efforts and acrylic panels, just like I mentioned in the student centers. Face coverings will be required. Your contact, your, your, sorry, your check-ins are go now going to be contactless. Once you're inside, we'll be closing off certain parts of the building. Certain equipment's gonna be spaced out and adjusted layout to ensure physical distancing. As I mentioned earlier about signage, please pay attention to that. A variety of indoor and outdoor programming will also be available at both campuses. Everything is going to be adjusted to maintain safety and with your wellness in mind. We will also continue all our efforts that we've been focusing on the online platform. If you haven't done so already, please visit our website at go.fiu.edu forward slash virtual WRC. Bottom line, all these measures that we're putting into place, we want to ensure your health and your well-being. We ask for your cooperation as the success of these measures depends directly on everyone doing their part. Hence, Panthers protecting Panthers. Although things are going to look and feel different, we continue to plan, we continue to prepare for you. We thank you for trusting us in us providing safe spaces for you. And we take your trust very seriously. On behalf of my entire team, I want to say that we're excited to welcome you back in fall. Thank you. Thank you, Sanyo. And I couldn't be prouder of, of Joe, of Scott, of Sanyo, of the entire team that's been working tirelessly uh, for your well-being. And your well-being is experiential, um, it's, it's physical, um, but it's also uh, emotional and mental. And we know that everyone is going through increased stressors. Um, there's a lot of un unknowns. A lot of unknowns create a lot of anxiety. Um, and everyone is also managing multiple, pr multiple priorities. And so to address some of the services that we have available for you is our own Dr. Brenny Garcia from Student Health and Wellness. Brenny? Thank you, Dr. Behar. Hello, students. <clears throat> um, a lot of the things that I'll be discussing shortly um, have already been discussed in prior slides, but I wanted to drill down a little more into the specificity of some of the questions that have been raised in the prior student town hall and the international student town hall. So first and foremost, I want to address um, a lot of the questions and concerns that we've been receiving about your dollars, right? You all work very hard for the money spent on tuition and fees, um, and we've gotten some questions about you know, reduction in cost and that you're not being able to utilize all the services. I want you to understand that at least from the healthy perspective, we <clears throat> have made it our, our mission to provide you with as close to 100% of every single service that is covered by your fee. That includes Disability Resource Center, counseling, victim empowerment, healthy living, health compliance, etc. So everything from counseling sessions to educational workshops, um, even our massage therapists, right? You're not physically on campus to get those relaxing massages, um, but even they have been so thoughtful and creative at creating online sessions on how to do stretching and self massages. So we've really tried to be creative to make sure that we are using your dollar as wisely as we can so that you don't lose any of those services. Um, so drilling down into the questions, following up on a lot of the questions that we've been receiving from our international students. Um, tomorrow, we will be finalizing your health insurance plans. Um, our board of trustees is gonna be um, signing off on that contract. So hopefully no later um, than Monday, our website will be updated with the plans and all of the forms necessary for you to sign up for those plans. So please be attentive to the website and any communication either through my office or IS to make sure that you get signed up prior to um, the first day of fall semester as is required by federal regulation. Um, again, just emphasizing a question that um, popped up at the last town hall regarding um, counseling services. While our focus will continue to be telehealth services for each of our students to make sure that we are um, 
you know, keeping the safety of you and our employees in mind, we will be offering a limited amount of in-person services and appointments throughout the fall semester. Um, those details in terms of capacity are still being worked on with my team. So please be attentive to your emails for further information, but those will be made available to you. The last three bullet points I'll, I'll discuss kind of together because we have been getting a lot of questions regarding enforcement and compliance of, you know, well, there's a lot of new rules, there's a lot of new guidelines, how are you guys going to manage all of this process? There's, you know, 55, 56,000 students, that's a lot of, of students to manage. Um, so education, first and foremost, is going to be our priority, right? Panthers Protecting Panthers is our tagline for a reason. We want to make sure that we work with one another and support one another to make sure that our colleagues, our classmates, um, our visitors are following the regulations and keeping one another safe. However, for those that, you know, might not be following the rules very well, um, there will be a process and a reporting structure being set up through the Student Conduct and Academic Integrity Team. Um, we will be sharing more information on that in the coming days and my next slide shortly will show you that process. Um, but please know that there will be a reporting structure if you see any folks on campus um, not following those guidelines on a consistent basis. So again, your goal will always be kind of educating that person one on one issuing that warning, making sure that they understand um, the importance of following these guidelines. But for those consistent infractions, there will be an escalation process, starting with a failure to comply, which is part of the student honor code. Um, as Bobby and his team mentioned, the P3 app is going to be extremely important, not just for students, but for anybody coming to campus. One question that we've been receiving is, oh, do I only fill it out when I'm coming to class? I only have online classes. I don't necessarily have to fill out the app. A lot of you, based on our utilization year after year, we know that even our online students, because most of you live within the Tri-County area, still come to campus to use library services, the rec centers, um, the student unions to try to get food, meet up with your fellow classmates. So anytime you're gonna plan to come to campus for any of those things, we do make, we need to make sure that you please fill out the app prior to getting out of your car. Please do not come into a building and then <laughs> uh, fill out the app because that kind of defeats the purpose. Um, so we will be issuing reminders obviously throughout the semester, but please make sure that you do that to keep everyone safe and so that uh, Dr. Trepka's team can stay on top of the surveillance and contact tracing um, process. And then lastly, this is new. Um, we will be mandating a training for all students. This training was issued to all of the employees last week. Um, so the employees were the first ones to try to get that done, make sure all the bugs are out, uh, but our IT team has been wonderful. So we are currently updating some of the slides because obviously it was very employee heavy um, and some of the words don't relate to our student body. So I am working with the IT team to finalize all of um, those slide edits. So our goal is by August 1st, you should be receiving a notification via email or Canvas notifying you of this training. So please be attentive to that notice because you will be required to finalize that prior to the first day of fall on August 24th. Next slide. And just a quick overview, the really the bulk of the questions we get is where do we find all this information? There's a lot of things happening. So much is changing. Um, these, I would say, are the four biggest areas for you to kind of stay on top of everything. So I'll start from the bottom up. Um, the FIU Corona FAQ page okay. Okay. by our Department of Relations. Um, has a plethora of information and it is updated on a daily, daily basis. So while I recognize that it, the page could be overwhelming sometimes, um, I do encourage you to, to look at the specific taglines to make sure that you're trying to get all of the information um, that you're looking for because it is extremely helpful. Um, obviously on three, make sure that you're following all of the student health and wellness social media pages because we do update that with um, changes, especially to our services and hours of operation um, will be there. So please make sure that you save all of those accounts. For virtual events, going back to my earlier statement about things that we're providing to you through the health fee, a lot of those things have had to be converted to virtual, similar to Jose Toscano's um, comments about student life and development. 
All of our events are posted on the virtual calendar for the university. So while we also promote it on social media, um, if you're not you know, that uh, tech savvy or you're not a social media person, your backup is the FIU virtual calendar. And last but not least, um, in April, after we went remote, um, remote learning and remote work, my team created a new student health and wellness resource guide. So every month on the 15th or thereabouts, um, in case it lands on a weekend, each of you as students have been receiving a student, a student health and wellness guide to your email. So if you have not been checking those and maybe deleting them, I please, please, please encourage you to make sure that you stay on top of it. August 15th, our issue on August 15th especially is going to be very important because we are dedicating that issue specifically to your return to campus. So it's going to include all of the reminders of things you have to get done before August 24th, all of the resources that are available to you, um, things that, you know, kind of services and, and offices that may be able to help you if you still have questions. So if you haven't read any of them in the past, please look out, especially for the one on August 15th, along with any other additional emails that President Rosenberg or the university will be sending out to you via email. Thank you, Dr. Behar. Thank you, Dr. Garcia. This has been very helpful and very informative. And thank you all um, on Zoom and on Facebook for hanging in there. We've got uh, over 500 folks consistently listening in, students, parents, um, and we're, we're looking forward to now transitioning uh, to the Q&A session. We know we've spent the last 45 minutes giving you a lot of information and we're hopeful that um, this next Q&A portion will continue to meet your expectations. And so um, I just want to remind you to make sure that as you post questions that they're succinct um, and they're concise and that you are um, using the Q&A function. And for those watching on Facebook, you may add your questions in the comment sections. And so the first question that we have uh, is for our Chief of Police, Alexander Casas. Will FIU provide masks? Um, yes, funny question to ask your Chief, but I have been involved in, in the procurement and distribution of masks. So we're wearing many hats here at FIU as this process goes on to get you safely to campus. And, and the answer is yes. All our students will be given a face mask, a face covering um, to comply with the FIU mandate, with the county executive, executive orders and so forth. Um, in the next couple of days, you should be getting an email um, articulating exactly how we're gonna go do that. But bottom line is we're gonna have a curbside distribution um, as well as an ongoing method of distribution for those of you that can't make the curbside. But the short answer is yes, you will get a face mask free of charge. And the longer answer is, is details are coming very soon. So pay attention to your emails as Dr. Garcia said, because they'll give you details on how you're gonna go about receiving those. Thank you. And this is a follow-up question, Chief. It may be for you, it may be for Dr. Garcia. Who will actively be enforcing masks uh, besides the signs that will be placed throughout campus? Um, so actually it's a, it's a tandem. Um, it's, it's a multi-pronged uh, effort to make sure that all of our students comply with the mandate. Um, it starts with, as you've heard throughout, the Panthers protecting Panthers. It starts with you holding each other accountable, reminding each other of the rule to wear your face covering. Um, you'll find that 99 out of 100 times, someone just simply forgot. Um, so we're hoping that that will turn into people putting their, their face coverings on. But if you find someone who's not doing that, or you just don't feel comfortable asking someone, um, we definitely don't want you to engage in a confrontation. Notify a university administrator. It could be whoever is in charge of the particular area you're in, say it's a computer lab or something like that, or in the library. Let someone know, and, and they'll know the appropriate action to take. Um, but th what the bottom line is, they're going to make sure that people comply with the ruling, with, with the, uh, the mandate to wear your face coverings. And yes, your police department is prepared to ensure that that compliance takes place, um, even if it means having to ask someone to leave because they refuse to wear it. Um, students that refuse to wear it, um, our, our student conduct is, is ready to take that later on, you know, later on take that enforcement action. And I don't know if Dr. Garcia wants to speak to that, but it, it was discussed in her slide as to what, what action student conduct is prepared to take to make sure that our, our students comply with that to keep each other safe. 
Uh, nothing else to add to Chief's comments, but in the chat, I will post the link to the incident report um, page that I mentioned earlier. So again, if um, you do see a student or even an employee for that matter that hasn't been um, compliant and they kind of like are repeat offenders and you're just like the education piece is just not working out, um, I will post the link uh, for the students to have handy um, so you know how to report those incidents. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Um, this question now turns a, a little bit more towards the health side and it's for Dr. Roldan. Um, if, if as a student I feel sick but I'm negative for COVID, um, should I stay home and not attend class? What should I do? Yes, thank you Dr. Behar and good afternoon Panthers. Thank you so much for attending this such an important uh, town hall which is really for you and to keep you safe. Uh, the answer, a short answer to that is yes. We are asking anyone that has flu-like symptoms and th they don't feel well not to come on campus. That is going to be the best to uh, secure that you are safe and that others are also safe. So you go through the proper channels of um, notifying your, I, I assume notifying your professors that you would not be in class, but please stay safe and take care of yourself while away. Thank you. And this is a follow-up question um, or, or tangential, uh, uh, Dr. Feldan, and also to Andrew. We're getting a lot of questions from out-of-state students who what they see about Miami on the news is a global epicenter. Um, and so if I move into housing, will it be safe to leave campus? Andrew, would you like to start? Or I, I, can, I can actually, what I would advise is that uh, we do have our own community at FIU and we are keeping you safe and we're putting in all the safeguards and everyone is working very, very hard to make sure that our community is safe. But there's a very large community out there and the same, same public health measures that you're following in our own community, you should be following in the community at large. And that would be the only way that Panthers can, uh, can help Panthers uh, stay safe and uh, and hopefully not uh, get the virus. Thank you. Well, and, and just to add to that, you know, we expect that students are going to be leaving their residence halls because they have jobs out in the community or, or other things that they have commitments for that they have to go to. But we encourage students that until the pandemic's over is to do those things that are essential, um, practice physical distancing when you're out, wear a mask, and, and wash your hands frequently. Um, those are all things that you should be doing both on campus and off campus. Thank you, that's a, that's a wonderful answer. Now I'm gonna turn it to more of an academic side um, and this is for Charlie. If I look at my schedule and I have two remote classes scheduled at the same time and day, is that a problem? Uh, yes, I'm not sure the system could even allow you to do that. So perhaps um, you may need to take another look. But yeah, remote courses, the difference between a remote course and a fully online course, um, both, both of them are taking place in a virtual online environment, but the remote courses will have synchronous or specific meeting times. So the, the days and times that, that are listed, those would have been the days and times you would have met if the course were in person on campus. And those are the times that you will log in and participate in the course virtually. Um, so take a look. If you, if you have that, you can obviously send me the information about that and ask Charlie. Um, but you shouldn't have more than one remote class at the same time because you can't log into two courses at the same time. Perfect. Thank you. And this question is for Jose. What opportunities is FIU offering to students who want to be able to make a difference with the impact that COVID-19 is having in our community? Well, first, I'd like to thank those students who are thinking about the community. Um, but I, I, I want to echo what we all have been saying here today, and we want to make sure that we are safe when we're doing these measures. So with that said, our Center for Leadership Office offers opportunities, and they have a list of resources that are there. These are community vendors that have been vetted throughout the years and are trusted of the university. So I encourage everybody who's interested in a volunteer position or a volunteer opportunity to visit. If you have a suggestion or you may have an idea, right, um, that may be not listed there, feel free to email them at cls at fiu.edu and let them know, like, this is the name of the organization. I didn't see a part of the list. Are they vetted? Are they not vetted? Because 
through all this process, we've been adapting and we've been getting a lot of inquiries from the community. So that, that list could be, um, could be edited and could be changed as time rolls. So make sure if you have any questions to feel free to reach out, cls at fiu.edu. Thank you, Jose. Um, when, when the university opens in the fall, I am sorry, this question I believe is, is for Dr. Roldan um, and Amy Aiken um, can also uh, provide a response. Will FIU be offering COVID-19 testing on campus once the university opens? Uh, yes, uh, we will be offering and include, uh, actually the clinics have been operational and continue to be operational ever since we went remote. So at the student health clinic, uh, you will be uh, able to get your testing. If you're not on campus and would like to go either to any of the county sites, we do have the Tamiami County site next to us and or any other, um, or any other place, any other of the county sites and or even CVS or Walmart also that are offering testing. But for our students, we do have the student health clinic that as we speak and we, do, uh, we are testing our students. Thank you. And this is a, a, a follow-up question, um, Dr. Roldan, and, and also to Andrew Naylor. Um, as a student, we're seeing on the news that many institutions are mandating tests for residential students. Um, can you address why we at FIU are not requiring testing at this time for all housing students or all students? So I think it's important to note that a test is only as good in the moment that it was taken. So if they take a test and they live in Utah and they're traveling to FIU, there's all kinds of interactions that can be taking, take place um, during that travel that could put them at risk. And so what's more important is when they arrive is that the students are taking the proper precautions and that they know that they, you know, if the, um, they want to get tested that we have the free testing at the fairgrounds where they can get tested to um, determine if they were exposed. Uh, I would second that, that the most important, the most important tools that we have is wear your mask, wash your hands and watch your distance. That those are the tools that we have current, that the best tools that we have currently, but uh, know that if you do need testing, because you're either asymptomatic, asymptomatic or have been exposed to a COVID positive patient, uh, that uh, individual that you can go to the student health clinics and get tested or can go to any of the county sites, which is uh, the testing is free of charge. Perfect, thank you. And this question, I'm actually going to direct it to our president. Um, as a student, I'm excited to get back to campus and take some classes. Is there a chance that we will have to switch back to fully online or remote in the fall? Mr. President? Well, let me say on behalf of the entire, the entire professional staff and faculty and our board, we want everybody back. I mean, you know, we, we, we are very, very anxious to make sure that this university is fully operational as the legislature intended it and as our donors want it and as our students uh, as our students deserve. Uh, it's a fluid situation. And so therefore, uh, we have to be prepared for every eventuality. But there will be a continuity of certainty is that one way or the other, your classes will be available. And then I want to thank the provost and the academic affairs team for ensuring that. So we don't rule anything out at this point. We're going to let the, the, we have to let the data and the science guide us with the interests of our students foremost in mind always, as well as the health and well being of our faculty and our professional staff. So right now, uh, we are on schedule. Uh, and um, I would expect that you need to pay close attention over the next couple of days and uh, weeks because it's a very fluid situation. And since none of us have ever been through this before, uh, we are prepared for all eventualities, but um, we will work backwards from the best interests of our students in mind. 
Thank you, Mr. President. And this is a follow-up question to that theme that comes to us from Facebook Live, and it goes to Andrew Naylor. If all classes do end up going remote, will housing students be required to leave campus? Um, if all classes go remote, um, students um, won't necessarily be required to leave campus. I think um, that's going to be evaluated with the team of administrators, our health experts, um, and if it's severe enough where we need to close down the residence halls, we will. But just because all classes go remote um, doesn't mean that housing will close. Thank you, Andrew. And this question now goes to Sanyo Matthew. Uh, will the bookstore reopen during the fall semester? Yes, uh, the bookstore does plan to reopen. Every vendor and partner that we work with at the university have submitted some detailed plans and is being evaluated by our Office of Business Services. Uh, after a thorough evaluation, they will open. They have been open and functioning, providing a lot of shipping services and continuously providing our, the support that our students need. But the plan is to open in the fall semester with reduced hours and, uh, and adjusted and modified operating procedures. Thank you, thank you. This question uh, is uh, for Charlie. Due to new guidelines and having a limited amount of students per class, are more sections for labs being added during the fall semester? I am worried about my graduation. I would tell you if, if you're struggling to, if any student is struggling to find the courses that they need, especially those that are getting closer to graduation, you please feel free to reach out to me. I can work, I'm working with all of the, the different academic units um, to try to make sure that we have the courses that we need. Um, keep in mind that a number of the lab courses specifically were moved to remote, which then doesn't require reduced numbers. So we're able to accommodate uh, more students in that, in that fashion. Um, but, but again, if you're struggling, obviously, you know, your advisors are a great resource, but if you cannot find the courses that you need um, in, the, in, the, in the format of the, the remote and off-campus, please let me know, and I'll, I will work with those departments to, to see how we might be able to accommodate you. So, um, you know, the departments are always looking at, not just in these days of COVID, uh, the academic units are always looking at the courses and the availability to make sure that we have what we need for our students. Perfect, thank you. And this question, um, actually, I'm going to ask two people to answer it from their perspectives. The first uh, will go to Dr. Roldan and then to our Dean of the College of Arts, Sciences and Education, who's with us today, uh, Dr. Michael Heithouse. Um, so what happens to academic programs that require internships or practicums or experiences out in the educational setting? Dr. Roldan, let's start with you. Well, first and foremost, we need to uh, know where, where that will be. Uh, that's important because uh, as we know, um, especially if, you, if you're going from a hot zone to another hot zone, that's not going to help. So it's important to see in what, what situation it will be, what it will entail, because uh, wherever you are, uh, whenever even that you travel, you need to understand that, again, you need to follow the public health uh, prevention measures. So uh, it's important. If for whatever reason there is no other option, uh, then we would have to look at those details. But if you have other options, then I think that that is something that you would need to consider at this time. Yeah, and, and just to follow up on that, uh, you need to work closely with your program directors and your academic units, because what we're doing is trying to tailor the experiences for every different type of intern. Uh, there's some that are in healthcare settings, some that are in school settings. And so what we're trying to do is find the virtual options where it's available and is gonna meet the needs of your program uh, to keep you safe or others safe. But in situations where you have to have that face-to-face -face experience, we're figuring out how we can do that safely. Um, and it may be that that gets delayed a little bit and is part of a zero credit workshop or some other way. Um, but this also pertains to labs. If we end up having to be remote, we're gonna find a way that you get the skills you need and are able to progress academically. Um, so be in close touch with your academic advisor and your academic program. Thank you, Dean. We really appreciate that. And, and again, I just want to emphasize to everyone out there that the entire team of leadership and professional staff and faculty are working um, tirelessly with many hats um, to make sure that, that we're able to support your, your academic uh, success 
during this unprecedented time. So <clears throat> this question goes to Alexandra Valdez, our, our student body president. I am a new student. I'm a freshman. I don't know uh, really anything about FIU. How do I engage um, with the student body during this time? Thank you, Dr. Bayhart. So um, definitely right now SGA is super excited to open its doors to new um, members and student leaders that are interested in joining our student government. Uh, our applications have been open, so we encourage students that are interested in being involved, like you said, um, within their student body and within the university to apply. Uh, the link is super easy, go.fiu.edu slash join SGA. And if they want to have you know an open conversation and, and and find where they they would most likely fit in or or be more engaged within their student body feel free to um send me an email at uh, sga prez at fiu.edu or sga mmc um at fiu.edu thank you thank you and this question is for charlie is there any chance that my online class would be moved back to campus during the semester if the virus settles down? No. <laughs> the courses that are, um, that are being starting out as remote or online will remain that way throughout the rest of the semester. Keep in mind we have students who are staying in, in other states or in other countries to take their courses remotely. So obviously it would be an unfair advantage if we were to suddenly move things to on campus. So um, you can rest assured that they would remain in that, in that same um, format. Thank you. This question actually will go to, to Amy Aiken, our AVP for Operations and Safety. Um, I am looking at the Caribbean Basin and we're beginning to track storms. What is the hurricane plan for the university uh, during this crisis? And will I be safe in the residence halls? Thank you, Elizabeth. I too am looking at the Caribbean as are many on this call. Um, we're looking at it on a daily basis, and um, that's good. I'm glad to hear that, that others, um, our students, are looking at it as well. Yes, at FIU, not only do we take your, your safety regarding COVID very seriously, but we take hurricane preparation very, very seriously. Six months out of every year is hurricane season. We have worked very closely with housing. They have an incredible plan um, for this particular hurricane season where they have um, distanced individuals Normally, it would be one residence hall where students would be, but they have worked to identify additional residence halls so that students can be safely socially distanced. Um, we have stockpiled 10 days worth of food and water for any of our students who are staying on campus um, in the event that they cannot get supplies. We have a portable bathroom trailer, a portable shower trailer. If the, something happens in one of the halls where the plumbing goes awry, we are going, you know, we have the capability to make sure that students can maintain their hygiene. Obviously very important. We've talked about that a lot on this call. So we are prepared um, for to handle not only a hurricane, but a hurricane during COVID. Certainly challenging, but the individuals on this call have risen up to the challenge. Thank you. This next question is actually for Roger Clegg, uh, Craig. Will 8th Street Campus Kitchen be takeout only when fall 2020 begins? I like to sit and have my meals inside the Graham Center. Dr. Behar, thank you so much for the question. Um, 8th Street Campus Kitchen has been open since the stay at home order uh, went into place back in March. Uh, they've served the on campus community, including the housing residents, uh, again, since uh, March 12th when the stay at home order went into effect. They're opening, they're operating today using CDC guidelines and social distancing, uh, plexiglass barriers, and all the safety uh, precautions in place. Currently, because of the guidelines of Miami-Dade County, they are takeout only. We are closely monitoring those guidelines um, and we will change and we will communicate as fit. Um, we plan to operate, uh, offer 8th Street Campus Kitchen services throughout the fall semester. And again, we will communicate with you if takeout and in-person dining opportunities uh, as the guidelines change in Miami-Dade County. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, please visit the Shop FIU website for up-to-date information as we get closer to the fall semester. 
Perfect. Thank you so much, Roger. Uh, this sure. question is for our uh, senior director of our, our Disability Resource Center, Amanda Nigadula, who's joined us. Um, I am hard of hearing and I, as a student, have a hard time um, adjusting to the masks. Is there an opportunity for um, another approach uh, or, or a different kind of mask for, for someone who does depend on reading lips some of the times? Hi, yes, thank you. The Disability Resource Center has procured and has masks that have clear view of the speaker's mouth and lips. For students who are hard of hearing or deaf, you can simply reach out to the Disability Resource Center or email me directly following this conversation and I'll be happy to follow up and provide that information and how to get that mask to you. Thank you, Amanda. No and problem. That, that flows into the next question. Um, and I'd just like the Chief of Police to kind of review um, the distribution of masks. As a student, how am I going to get my mask? Well, that, we'll be sitting out a communication in the next couple of days with that final process. But it's the, the, the scenario that we're playing out is it's going to be a curbside distribution. The idea is to get you your mask in a method that is as light contact as possible, as contactless as we can make that. So in the next day or so, you'll get an email um, where you'll be able to reserve a date and time to come pick up your mask curbside. It'll be handed to you. Um, so, so look out for that. It, it's coming. If for some reason you can't make it, um, there will be an ongoing methodology for distribution. Um, there'll be some dedicated vending machines, some vending machines on campus that have been repurposed, and some spots on campus that will work to be able to, to keep that distribution going on for those of you that may be out of town or something like that, but we'll be able to have a mask on your first day back, back to campus. Thank you, Chief. Um, and this next question uh, goes back to our president. Um, I am planning on graduating in the fall and I would love nothing more than to be able to walk across the stage. Has any decision been made on fall graduation? No, not yet. Uh, first of all, we share your enthusiasm for the, for the, the, the stage and for the face-to-face the -face graduation. I'm really excited about our graduation coming up in August. It's a virtual graduation, but there's some really um, uh, interesting approaches to celebrating the graduation that, that you will see uh, virtually. And we're gonna graduate around 5,500 uh, students. So we will uh, make a decision, but we're, we'll wait as long as we can to make that decision uh, consistent with the time demands that you may have for family members to be there, and obviously the safety and the physical distancing uh, rules that are in place as we go into the late fall. So I regret that we can't tell you now, but we assure you that we wanna have that face-to-face -face graduation if it's safe and it's, if it's consistent with state-of-the-art data and rules that are then in place. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, and this question, I'm not sure if E.K. Uh, Hudson, our Vice President for HR, is on the call, but I do believe that Delrish Moss is, is, uh, is with us today, and I'm sure he can answer it. Um, I, am, I am a student of color, and I am concerned about returning to campus. Has there been um, any action taken uh, with respect to ensuring that our campus is free um, of racism and a safe place? And that question can also be addressed by the president as well, but I think uh, I'll, I'll start with Delrish Moss. He might not be with us. Well, I just joined you and I think, oh, you, think the chief of police is also here, so he can, he can also weigh in on this because, uh, uh, you know, the department is doing everything that can under his leadership uh, to make sure that we're, we're, we're moving forward in the right direction. I think that, um, you know, in answer to your question, you know, FIU is a safe place for people of all walks of life, whether that be race, gender, uh, religion, ethnicity, whatever. Uh, we, we here as an institution take pride in making sure that we, we, are, we are safe and, 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 
and equitable. And, and that's why we're working in very hard in this vein to make sure that we continue to be. And so uh, if anyone has any fears, I think that, you know, you can rest assured that everyone here is working as hard as they can and as diligently as they can to make sure that you're safe uh, from discrimination, from crime, from any of the ills that are out there that, that people face as challenges in cities. Thank you so much. Dr. Behar, I know you didn't call on me, but if I could add Bye. one uh, one point there for that student. Um, if you go to um, the Counseling Center's social media page, so the handle is at FIU underscore VEP, we have created student support forums um, addressing this specific issue. So it's called the Forums to Counter Racism with Love and Support. Um, and it's different types of, of groups, depending on how you identify. Our team um, has done a tremendous job over the last month. So shout out to all of my counselors and therapists um, that have been leading those forums. So if you need a place um, to talk through some of those anxieties and stressors, I do encourage all of our students um, to check out all of the dates and login information to make sure that you can have that network of support. Thank and, you so and, much. And Dr. Bear, you called him the right person because you know he's involved in various of those task forces and so forth. So I know what you were thinking, but if anybody wants to talk to me directly, I, I, we will always make time. You can reach me on my email, which is abcasas at fiu.edu, and we'll definitely set aside some time to discuss your specific concerns. But you, you called him the right guy. Good job. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. And it's an important topic, and we have to continue to, uh, to discuss it. Um, and address our issues. So this next question, I think, goes to um, Francisco Valinas, our Director of Financial Aid, um, or Andrea J. in One Stop. Um, as a student, I completed the FAFSA in January for next year, but my family uh, business has been impacted. Is there a way that I can amend my financial aid, or is there additional support? Uh, this is Francisco. I can answer the question. So, yes, we have a process called professional judgment. Go to the One Stop website, onestop.fiu.edu, and click on forms. And you'll see under the financial aid form, professional judgment for the uh, 2021 school year. And it'll lead you through the process to be able to tell your story and provide your documentation so that we can try to make adjustments to change. Uh, what your eligibility is for aid. Thank you, Francisco. So there is there is a link to professional judgment on the financial aid page where students can amend their information if uh, their family situation has has temporarily changed. We know that that COVID has impacted families. And what if, as a student, and I think this question goes to Laura Castillo, what if, as a student? I'm just stuck in a short-term situation. Is there opportunities um, for, for aid for me that is outside of the FAFSA? Absolutely. So if you're finding yourself in a difficult situation, you can visit go.fiu.edu backslash e-aid request um, and request emergency assistance and we'll do everything that we can to help you. Form of aid can come in a variety of ways, whether it's um, monetary, or through access to the food pantry, counseling, um, a variety of ways. Perfect. Thank you so much. So that's e and, and the email was eaid at fiu.edu? Yes. You can email there. You can submit a request. I'll drop it um, in the chat. Go.fiu.ea request. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and so this question goes back to, to Andrew Naylor for housing. Um, for the limited visitors or no visitor guests policy, how will that be enforced at university apartments? So university apartments, it is going to be difficult to enforce just by nature of how the complex is built. So we're going to depend on residents um, to, to report um, when somebody's allowing visitors from outside. And then we also have the staff who live in the buildings who will be monitoring. Um, and if a student does have a visitor as a guest, it'll be addressed through the student conduct process. Thank you. Um, and it all goes back to the theme that's been discussed throughout this entire day, which is it's about our self-discipline and taking care of ourselves and each other and from an educational perspective, following the rules because we know it's the best choice to make. 
So um, thank you, thank you all very much. Uh, we appreciate that um, for that question. And I have a question um, that that I believe goes back to Dr. Roldan. Um, will testing ever be required for any of us as students? Um, can you all, <clears throat> excuse me, can you all hear me? Okay, because the lights went off, I'm sorry. I'm here at, on campus. Um, as long as the test, the testing that we have currently, which is basically in the uh, conditions that you are now, um, continue to be as such, it will be very, very difficult to mandate testing across, except that if we do, we would have to then control everyone's environment. And that would be extremely difficult. So as long as the testing available that we have now, as far as scientifically that we have now, it will be very difficult to mandate testing across our campus. Great. Thank you all so much. And thank you uh, to those of us on Zoom uh, and Facebook who have uh, hung in there with us. Uh, we hope that this Q&A portion has really provided some valuable insights and has met your expectations. I want to thank all the panelists and all the team members for answering questions, for being brave and vulnerable enough, for being called on at a moment's notice, and for uh, the folks who are behind the scenes diligently ans answering the Q&A questions in the chat rooms. Um, this truly is a team effort. Um, and you help to make FIU uh, at the, the best place to be and you help to make FIU very special. And so at this time, it gives me great pleasure to uh, re-welcome our president, Dr. Mark B. Rosenberg for closing remarks. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, I, this gathering this afternoon is a reminder that we're all in this together. It's a reminder we can do a little bit more every day to protect ourselves to protect our families, to protect our community. In many ways, it's on us, Panthers protecting Panthers. I know that we're planning uh, uh, many more of these uh, gatherings, but keep the questions coming. We, we get better, we get sharper, we get clearer with your questions. We're so grateful uh, for your engagement here. I'm personally interested in hearing what you thought uh, about this, and I'm at uh, M-A-R-K, Mark dot Rosenberg, R-O-S-E-N-B-E-R-G, at F-I-U dot E-D-U. I'd like to know how can we answer your questions better and more clearly? How can we improve? How can we make sure that the environment that we have is absolutely the healthiest environment possible under the circumstances? So please let me know, Mark dot Rosenberg at F-I-U, edu have a great afternoon yeah. you ready pause up yeah for those of you that want to know what fiu is all about it's like this, FIU's 10% skill, 20% gotta, 15% concentrated power colada, 5% respect, 50% bold, and 100% the reason we rep the blue and gold. From sun blazers to Rory, ready to tell the story, starting in 65, they spilled with all the glory, three bowls in a row, learning across the globe, student diversity, this is the place that you should know, began with just one tower, this our time, this is our hour, dine in GC and experience our panther power. You heard of BBC? Kicking it by the seas? My visit Aquarius, located next to the Keys. We're the 305, truly the home team, repping 305. You know that's just literally from humble beginnings, but not how we end. There's about 142 countries in our blend. A melting pot, internationals, our middle name. Once you're a panther, look, we're all just the same. Creating special strides, leaping until we soar. Fostering panther pride for those who warm, hear us roar. This is 20% flair, 80% grit, be 100% emerging and never willing to quit. High scoring on the bar, students learning the law. I can hear the president yelling out, Mazel tov, on our way to top 50. Center for new solution, wall of wind to blow you away and cancel pollution. We have more programs than any school can say. Finishing four years, everybody knows the way. FIU's 10% skill, 20% 
percent gotta, fifteen percent concentrated power colada, five percent respect, fifty percent voting, one hundred percent the reason we rep the blue and gold. I use ten percent skill, twenty percent gotta, fifteen percent concentrated power colada, five percent respect, fifty percent voting, one hundred percent the reason we rep the blue and gold. Supposedly. We have some competition, but the best school in South Florida doesn't see the opposition. We're known to be global with our mission. Croquet down straight from Vicky's fried to great condition. When you talk about greatness, don't forget the blue and gold. 8th and 107th Ave has become our second home. With a friend like Rory, you can never feel alone. Welcome to Panther Hall. Just know this building's always cold, but with the trail of torch, you will always feel the heat. Give light to generations that will keep the legacy. Keep it moving. And don't you ever lose the trust. And this FIU family, they won't let you give up. FIU's 10% skill, 20% gotta, 15% concentrated power colada, 5% respect, 50% mold, and 100% the reason we rep the blue and gold. FIU's 10% skill, 20% gotta, 15% concentrated power colada, 5% respect, 50% mold, and 100% the reason we rep the blue and gold. So... Did that help you? Do you finally know what this university is all about? I have one request and one request only. We're FIU. Remember, 